Andy Studdart was the Chief Operations Officer at United Airlines on the morning of 9-11. In this short video, part of our Champions Responsible Business video series, Andy shares a little bit about that morning and the crisis decision-making and leadership he employed. Uh, so I'm sitting in, in the Chairman's office. We're having a discussion about union negotiations. The door is closed. Very contentious. Uh, a few other people in the room. It's about 10 minutes to 8. My secretary comes flying around. Uh, the chairman's secretary says, remembers this day. She comes flying around, doesn't even say a word to her, and bursts through the door and says, Andy, American has just hit the World Trade Center. Well, the airline guys in the room go, Psh, that's nuts. That can't happen. I mean, there's no way under any circumstances that an airline pilot is going to hit the World Trade Center. So we flip on the TV and there's the first uh, tower on fire. So uh, there's a, a fraternity, uh, call it, of the airline, so we would help each other it, during a crisis. So I run a couple hundred yards across a, 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 a sky bridge to the com operating center on the other side of the complex. And I get up to the uh, the op center, which is a floor with about 200 seats in it, football field size, and there's a quarterback station in the middle, and I get halfway there and I kind of boom out, you know, confirm American into the World Trade Center. And uh, this grizzled uh, operating guy looks up to me and says, boss, we can't find uh, 175. And the transponder had been turned off, and then boom another airplane hits the tower. Now, American is telling us that it's their second airplane, which in eventually went into uh, the Pentagon. So we don't know. And you can't tell by the light or anything. Uh, but we can't find them. Uh, we put out a general a tr intruder alert across the, uh, and then all of a sudden we can't get a response from uh, our second airplane. And uh, we get a call from the, uh, so by then I know we're in a crisis. And we immediately activate the crisis center, which is, I referred to earlier, like the bridge of the enterprise. But opening a crisis center in an airline is the single most significant thing you do. Because once that happens, everybody, it's like the Army, everybody in, in an airline has a second job. And that second job is to either run the airline, the rest of the airline, or act to support the crisis. And 3,000 people are put on an immediate uh, activation once that crisis center is open. So we open the crisis center. Uh, we got a call from a flight attendant to our maintenance base that described what was happening. But the flight that went into Shanksville we got a call that the crew had been killed and that the, uh, that the passengers and the crew, remaining crew, were going to try to take the flight back. So my immediately said, okay, so, so if they're successful, i got to land them. And it was a 757. This is what your, how your mind goes. So my problem-solving mind says, everybody else is doing their job. i got to get some guys working on a protocol on how a non-pilot can land a 757. And I grab a couple of the, of the chief pilots who are there, and I say, guys, we may get this plane back. Which one of the flight attendants do you want to have land this thing? Or the, or the, so we came, we were working on a protocol, uh, which, would, which would work. It's a, what's called a Cat 3 airplane, which means it could land itself if pointed to the right airport. Uh, and so uh, a few minutes later, we find out that it, it has crashed outside of Shanksville. Uh, and uh, by then, we're getting calls from all over the world that there are other planes hijacked. Uh, we, had a, uh, we had a crank call, called in and said, my wife just called me. She's a flight attendant on a certain flight number call, flying in from Europe on a 767. The crew's been killed, yada, 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 and it was a crank. And the airwaves were so, were so overwhelmed that we weren't getting responses. And the other thing we found out was the way the queuing happened on the nonverbal communications in the cockpits. It's first in, uh, first out. So you, we keep queuing 
the, 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 the cockpit crews to respond over the, over the uh, type in it, typing in a message, and all the new messages were at the other end, at the end of it, and so they never got them. So we'd have minutes, which seemed like hours, where we thought we had all these planes, you know, out of the, out of control. And then we had pilots losing their minds. Uh, uh, you know, one guy came on and said, uh, "I want to be cleared into Honolulu," and he was landing in Kansas. And so I think they all just kind of had. Kind of, kind of a mass hysteria. So we had 160 plus flights in the air. We lost two airplanes. And uh, we were putting them down wherever they could go. And we diverted them to the nearest suitable airport. And we had airplanes in places that shouldn't have had airplanes. Um, Yellowknife Canada had a 747 in it. And it took us days to figure out how to get it out of there. 